Today, we are talking all things Stun Baton, right here in Savin's World. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Savin's World, the gaming channel for the average gamer by an average gamer. And today we are back in the Savin's World testing grounds in Seven Days to Die Alpha 19. And today we are discussing all things Stun Baton. That's right, folks. We are back to see if the new book series and the added perks and all that fun stuff have all of the additions made the Stun Baton a viable weapon, or does the stun baton still suck? <laughs> we are going to find out right now. So let's go ahead and head inside our command center here. We are um, going to grab up all the things that we need, and as soon as I have everything in my inventory, we will go ahead and take a look. And there we go, folks. I grabbed everything that I thought I would need. Here, let me go ahead and put my helmet back on, get that out of the inventory. So I went ahead and I grabbed stun batons level one through six. Also grab some wood clubs, clubs here, and I'll explain why in a second. I grabbed the crafting materials, the books, and we are going to go through everything stun baton today. We're going to start off with the skills that govern this uh, this weapon. The skills that, that govern it directly can be found in the intellect tree, and that is going to be the electrocutioner perk. This says learn how to use stun batons more effectively incapacitate your victims easier and do more damage so let's go for, start with the electrocutioner tree and we will see exactly what these perks do starting off with level one low voltage where are the instructions you're smart but remember to point it away from you and pull the trigger Craft quality 2, poor stun batons, deal 10% more damage, stun victims 20% longer, and it unlocks stun baton crafting. And level 2, which can be opened up at intellect level 3, this is stun gun. You are getting the hang of using stun batons to incapacitate your enemies. Craft quality 3, fair stun batons, deal 20% more damage, and stun victims 40% longer. Level 3 is cattle prod. This can be opened up at intellect level 5. You are getting dangerous dangerous with stun batons. You could probably knock out cattle if the zombies hadn't ate them all. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Craft quality, four good stun batons. Deal 30% more damage and stun victims 60% longer. Next up is four, danger high voltage. This can be unlocked at intellect level seven. You are lethal with stun batons. Craft quality, five great stun batons. Deal 40% more damage and stun victims 80% longer. And last but not least, opened up at intellect level 10, is the Electrocutioner. You are the last thing they see coming and an Executioner with stun batons. Deal 50% more damage and stun victims 100% longer. So that sounds pretty cool. I mean, that, that sounds like a pretty good perk. But we're going to get into uh, why it's not so great here uh, in, a, in a little bit. And then, of course, the intellect attribute is what governs, governs this entire perk tree, including the electrocutioner perk. Uh, it says, uh, intellect is the measure of your mental ability. Increasing intellect improves headshot damage with intellect-governed weapons, such as the stun baton. So you get more uh, headshot damage, and you also get more chance to dismember the higher you go into uh, intellect. So you start at level one. It's a 200% headshot damage and 5% chance to dismember and you go all the way up to level 10 which gives you 300% headshot damage and a 50% chance to dismember. All of the intellect points are one point until you get to level 6 then they are two until you get to level 9. Levels 9 and 10 are three skill points in order to uh, unlock those. So uh, we've gone through the intellect tree in a previous video so I won't go uh, too far into that. Now, there are a couple more perks that we need to look at that, that will affect the stun baton. So let's go ahead and start in the agility tree, and we will take a look at Flurry of Blows. There's three levels to Flurry of Blows. First one opens up at agility level one, which is cool. It uh, gives you, let's see, you have developed quick hands. One-handed melee attack speeds are increased by 10%. Cool. And as you can see, it says this perk applies to clubs, brawling, knives, machetes, and stun batons. So it does uh, work with the stun baton. 
Next up on the list is level two, Sudden Strike, which can be opened up at agility level four. You have developed the Sudden Strike. One-handed melee attack speeds are increased by 17%. And level three, Flurry of Blows can be opened up at agility level seven. You have mastered the fury, the Flurry of Blows. One-handed melee attack speeds are increased by 25%. Each kill recharges stamina by 30%. Point. That is actually an awesome, awesome perk. So now the um, that is the Flurry of Blows, and that is in the Agility Tree. To get it all the way up, you need to get Agility to level 7. And now we're going to take a look at one more skill, which is uh, the Sexual Tyrannosaurus skill. This specializes in unleashing a relentless assault of blows guaranteed to leave your prey slack-jawed at your unwielding stamina. Um, so this affects the stamina drain for the the uh, the weapons. The first level can be opened up immediately at strength level one. You have graduated to bench warmer. Reduce melee and tool stamina usage by eight percent and power attacks by fifteen percent. Since the stun baton is a melee weapon, that means that the the stamina cost to to use it is reduced if you go into this perk. Next up is ath athlete, which unlocks at strength level three. You are now a bona fide athlete, and getting winded doing nothing is a thing of the past. Reduce melee and tool stamina usage by 15%, and power attacks by 30%. Killing blows grant 10 stamina. Next up is Warrior, level 3. This can be opened up at strength level 5. Nobody will disrespect a warrior. Reduce melee and tool stamina usage by 20%, and power attacks by 40%. Killing blows grant 20 stamina. And last but not least, Cage Gladiator opened up at strength level 7. You are now a Cage Gladiator and have risen to the highest athletic prowess possible. Reduce melee and tool stamina usage by 25% and power attacks by 50%. Killing blows grant 30 stamina. So, if you get uh, Sexual Tyrannosaurus up to level 4 and you get Flurry of Blows up to level 3 with the Stun Baton, every time you kill a, an enemy it will boost, it'll grant you 60 total points of stamina, or at least that's how it should work. We're going to test that out here a little later to see if that actually does work. So those are the skills that govern the uh, the Stun Baton. We will go ahead now and take a look at the book series. Now, I've already read the book series for the Stun Baton because we did the robotics earlier. So not every book in the Tech Junkie series directly affects the stun baton but you um i will go ahead and go through each one just just really quickly just so you know what they all do so volume one it affects robotic weapons it's robotic damage the robotic weapons do 10 percent more damage doesn't really affect the stun baton but we've got uh number two here that keeps your robots from becoming junk robots and stun batons degrade 20 percent slower that's cool Number three is crafting ammo for the uh, turret. Number four is uh, shotgun shells for the turret. Number five is important to the stun baton because it gives you the ability to craft the stun repulsor mod, which I'm actually interested to see how that bad boy does. We are going to be testing the stun repulsor mod here uh, in, in a little bit. Number six, stun baton charging. Uh, this technique gives a 25% chance for regular and 50% chance for power attacks to instantly charge stun batons. So that could be cool. So you have a chance for every hit to actually uh, charge up the stun baton instead of having to hit, uh, I think it's three or four times. Three times I think it charged and the fourth one is, is, the, is, the, is the buffed attack. Not 100% sure, but I, I believe that's how it goes. All right, and then increased rate of fire. This one affects the, the, the robotic weapons, so we're not going to worry about number seven. So this is the book series that uh, that governs the stun baton. There are some pretty good buffs. So you've got stun baton, or you got volume two where the stun baton degrades 20% slower. You've got the ability to craft the stun repulsor mod and the stun baton charging. So those gives a little extra oomph to the stun, stun baton. Whether or not it's going to make a difference, we shall see. So that is all the skills, perks, and books that, that uh, govern the stun baton. Now let's go ahead and take a look at actually crafting a stun baton and what we need to do that. So we'll come over here and we will look for stun baton. There it is. So we are going to need uh, baton parts, forged iron, leather, duct tape, and electrical parts. So it's not too terrible crafting cost. 
uh, only five forged iron, a couple leather, a couple duct tape, a couple electrical parts, and four baton parts. You can find most of the uh, most of the stuff anywhere, and you scrap down two stun batons. Uh, you get three parts per, so you'd have to scrap two stun batons to craft yourself another stun baton, or come across baton parts out in the world, which I, I have found they are pretty much everywhere. And while we're in here, let's go ahead and take a look at the Stun Baton Repulsor mod. Let's see what it takes to craft this bad boy up. So this takes forged steel, duct tape, electrical parts, and mechanical parts. But it only takes five forged steel, so it's not a lot of forged steel. We're going to see if this mod is uh, is useful down the track. We're actually going to test it out and see and see how it is. So that is how to craft the Stun Baton and the Repulsor mod. Let's take a look at the actual weapon itself. So I have gone ahead and spawned in uh, level one to level six stun batons. So you take a look and unfortunately they did not do much to the base damage. That was one of my biggest complaints with the stun baton and why I feel it was such a junk weapon. Base damage on a level one stun baton is, I mean, it varies. Yes, obviously, but it's so low. It's 11, 11 for a regular attack, only 22 for a power attack. Yes, the stamina cost is low, and with fl uh, Flurry of Blows and Sexual Tyrannosaurus, you could swing this bad boy constantly, but it doesn't matter because your attacks per minute, you're only doing 70 attacks per minute. Even if you boost that with the perks, I, I really doubt that it's, it's gonna make that much of a difference. But we're going to test it. Right now, we're just taking a look at, at the actual stats. So, and a, a, as you would imagine, as you go up, you get a little bit better. Uh, look at that. Our tier four uh, is a, a whopping 12 damage. <laughs> so that was kind of a crappy roll on that uh, that one. But let's go all the way up to our tier six. So the tier six stun baton, 16 regular attack damage, 26 power attack damage. Wow. That is... Ugh, that's terrible. Again, low stamina cost, but still, I mean, you, it's like hitting the zombies with a wet noodle. It's it's terrible, in my humble opinion. Now, the reason I spawned in the clubs is because in the Alpha 18, I did a video on the stun baton, and I compared the level 6 stun baton to the level 1 wooden club. And yet, yeah, lo and behold, it's almost the same. So... Yes, let's look at the wooden club. It has a regular melee damage of 13. So only a few points less than a level six stun baton. Again, a level one wooden club, 13 melee damage. Level six top tier stun baton, 16. And let's take a look at the, uh, the power attack damage. Power attack on the wooden club, 27. Power attack on a level six stun baton, 26. Stun Baton costs more to make, craft, and upkeep. Wooden club, a couple of pieces of wood and you're good to go. And the stamina cost is 17, so it is a couple more. But, I mean, just comparing the two, a level 6, tier 6 Stun Baton should not have almost the exact same stats as a level 1 wooden club that you can craft on day 1 with next to nothing. Why would I use this? The only possible answer is that maybe, maybe the added mod, the stun baton repulsor mod and the extra perks, maybe that'll make it useful. We shall see. I just find it funny that the tier six, top tier stun baton, we compare that to a tier six wooden club. It's not even close. Yes, again, there is uh, the stamina cost is a couple points less, but look at the damage difference. A tier six wooden club, 20 damage, 20 regular damage, 34 power attack damage, as opposed to 16 and 26. It's not even close. And and this is a, a hunk of wood. A hunk of wood does more damage than the stun baton. Crazy. <laughs> All right, enough of my uh, rambling about how crappy this stun baton is. We still have yet to test it, so I can't say that definitively. It might may, It might surprise me. We'll see. Next up on the list, we're going to go through the mods that are available for the Stun Baton. So we're going to go with our Tier 6 here. And we're going to go, go through every one. I went ahead and grabbed every single one of the mods that uh, you can put on the Stun Baton. Now, let me get these uh, a little organized a little bit better here. So um, 
the three grips, yes, you can put, the, there's three different styles of grips you can put on, but keep in mind, you can only put on one grip. You can't put on all three. But let's go through them one by one and see exactly what can be put on the stun baton. So first up is the ergonomic grip. Decreases melee stamina usage by 10%, which is which is cool. So that in conjunction with uh, sexual tyrannosaurus, um, that you could your stamina cost would be down considerably with the ergonomic grip. Next up, fortifying grip. When your health is below 50%, you gain one point every fifth or every five seconds. Not bad, especially uh, if you're actually going to be using the stun baton. I guarantee you're going to be getting hit a lot. <laughs> so you just might need that. And then the structural brace mod. This modification for melee weapons and tools lowers degradation by 25%. So they degrade uh, slower, which means you don't have to repair them as much. Whoopee. Yeah, not, not very impressive. However, every time you do add a mod to a weapon, it does increase the damage. So that uh, keep that in mind. Okay, and then we have, next up is the Hunter mod. 100% damage to living beings. Not sure if you're going to be going out there and hunting deer with a, with a stun baton. Don't think it'd probably be the best choice. I mean, I guess you could try to take on a bear with a stun baton. Uh, that'd be that'd be interesting, <laughs> but I wouldn't honestly I wouldn't recommend it uh, highly for the for the stun baton. Uh, next up, rad remover disables uh, re regeneration ability of radiated zombies for ninety seconds. A very useful mod, especially for later on in the game when the radiated start spawning. Next up, we have the grave digger, fifteen percent more damage against dirt. I don't know why you'd be using a stun baton to dig, but you know at least it'll give you the extra damage. Uh, uh, boost next up wood wood splitter 50 percent more damage against wood i guess you could use your stun baton to bash through a wood block but you know that's what axes are made for then we have the iron breaker 15 percent more damage against iron again you're not you shouldn't be using the stun baton to uh to bash down some iron and last but not least uh for this row here is 15 percent more damage against stone the bunker buster mod these mods here are mainly for the tools Yes, you can put them in the stun in the stun baton, and I guess if you need that extra uh, damage boost, go for it. Otherwise, it's best to save these for for your tools. Now we've got come to the weighted head mod, a melee or a modification for all melee weapons and tools adds a chance to stun and slow victims. That is a useful useful mod, especially for for the stun baton. It is a melee weapon, and you can add a chance to stun it's a stun baton so it already has a chance increased chance to stun victims always a good thing to, to have on a melee melee weapon and then last but not least we have the stun baton repulsor mod this is the new one that they added in in alpha 19 install this mod into a stun baton and send zombies flying on the charged hit so that could be cool we're actually going to test that out here in in just a second so that is all the skills, the perks, the books, the dam the baseline damage and, and stats on the on the actual weapon itself, and how to craft it, and all of the mods. Now I think we are ready to head to the rifle range and kill some zombie jerks. Let's get to it, folks. I'm gonna head my way to the rifle range and I will see you folks in a bit. Okay, here we are, folks. We are at the rifle range. And I got a nice little stall picked out. I like using this end stall. It's nice. We might branch out and try some of the others here down the road. But for now, we're going to be using the end stall here. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to spawn in our favorite little lady, Zombie Arlene. And I'm I turned the AI off because I just want to uh, uh, demonstrate the tier 6 Stumbaton in action this is no points no perks i do have the books unfortunately but they don't really add much to the actual um weapon itself they only slow the degradation and allow you to uh they give you the chance to for the charged for the stun baton to be charged faster but that's uh, that's not not too bad it doesn't affect the damage or the stamina stamina cost and all that fun stuff so i didn't think it was too big of a deal but we're going to go ahead and test this bad boy out i'm going to Take out, see how many hits it takes to take out this this Arlene, and then we'll and then we'll do the next test. All right, Arlene, please forgive me. I know you can't fight back, and this isn't very sporting, but got to do what you got to do. 
This is testing. This is for science. All right. Not bad. So it took three hits to take her down. On the last hit, I did get the charge. So let's go ahead and let's spawn in another one. For science! And these are just regular hits. These were not power attacks. So I'm going to do one more regular attack, and then we're going to do a power attack. Then I think I'll spawn in a whole bunch of Arlene's, and we will see how long it takes me for regular attacks to take them down. One attack. Two. Three. Okay, so it looks like looks like three hits can take down a regular zombie jerk. Uh, and it looks like three hits also charges your stun baton. So let me see if I can... There we go. Want to get rid of the charge. Now let's go ahead and let's test it with a power attack. Let's see how the power attack does. So it took three regular attacks. Now we're going to do power attacks. One. Oh, darn it. Get rid of that charge. I don't want to hit her with the charge. One. Oh. <laughs> okay, two power attacks. So it was three regular attacks, two power attacks with a tier six stun baton. Not bad. So now let's spawn in a whole bunch of uh, Arlene's. We'll do all 25. Get her in here. Ooh, there's the spooky music. I'm going to leave the AI off and I'm, I'm still just going to use regular attacks and we'll do check power attacks. We'll see how long it takes me to, to take them all down. Oh, need to take a break. Out of stamina. Like we're only about halfway, maybe halfway. <laughs> Out of stamina again. Last three. Last one. Whew. All right, there we go. So that took, what, seven in in-game minutes? And I think I have my time set down to the lowest. <laughs> so that took a long time. Oh, long time. And the stamina drain is real, man, let me tell you. So I don't think we're going to do uh, another test with power attacks. It, it's, I don't... I don't think it's worth doing, but you saw it takes a long time. If you haven't specced in to the actual stun baton, it's not, uh, not, a, not the go-to weapon. Like I said, I'd stick with a wooden club, <laughs> but that's just me. Now let's go ahead and let's get the tier six stun baton fully modded. Uh, let's get specced into all the skills and get our character where he needs to be in order to max out, get the full potential of the stun baton. So I'm going to go ahead and get my character buffed up and I will be back in one second. And there we have it, folks. So I went ahead and I got my uh, stun baton fully modded. We're going to try the stun baton repulsor mod. I've got the weighted head, the ergonomic grip, and the rad remover. Now, the rad remover is not going to do as much good because we're not we're going to be fighting radiated zombies, but it does give us an extra point of, uh, here, let me show you here. It does give us a, a little, it uh, gives an extra point of, of damage. That's all we're really doing it doing it for to get that extra damage. So, stun repulsor, weighted head, ergonomic grip, and rad remover. That's what I went with. Let's take a look at our skills here. So, strength, I got us our, our sexual tyrannosaurus all the way up to level 4. Agility, flurry of blows is maxed out to level 3. Intellect is all the way up to level 10, and Electrocutioner is all the way up to level 5. So we are maxed out. This is as good as this bad boy can get. And I guess, yeah, look at that, that attack speed. And you'll notice my, my stamina. So it does attack very fast and does not use any stamina hardly whatsoever. Even with power attacks, not bad. And what's great is um, once we kill some zombie jerks, our stamina bar should increase. So let's go ahead and let's get ourselves some Arlene's. We'll wait a second, get ourselves back up to full stamina. And let's use the regular attacks and see how long it takes to blow through this horde of Arlene's. Mm. 
much, much faster. So you were, uh, we were able to uh, tear through this entire group of Arlene's. 25 zombie Arlene's in just a couple of in-game minutes. Zero stamina problems whatsoever. So that was not bad at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset. I'm going to spawn in 25 more, and we're going to do the same thing with power attacks and see if we can maintain our power attacks and do it even faster. All right, ladies, how are you today? Let's get to it. Boom, there it is. Again, we were able to wipe through, go through the entire group of, uh, of Arlene's. We had zero stamina problems. So that stamina boost is definitely a good thing. So we were able to go through 25 zombie Arlene's. I was constantly power attacking, had no stamina problems, and took them all out quite easily. Now the last thing I want to test is we're going to move over here into an open space. Because I didn't see that stun, uh, stun Baton Repulsor mod. It didn't seem to be very active. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spawn in three Arlene's. One here. One there. And one there. And I'm going to work my way up to a charge and see if the Stun Repulsor mod actually does send them flying like the description says. All right, we are all charged up. Let's get the uh, regular Arlene here and see if she goes flying. Um, not, not seeing a lot of flying. Maybe I need to do a power attack? All right, we're charged up. Let's see if the power attack will send Arlene flying. Uh... Well, we got another chance. Go! That wasn't... That was just the death animation. So, it looks like that stun baton repulsor mod. Let's read that again. Did I... Did I just not read that right? Install this mod into a stun baton and send zombie zombies flying on the charged hit. Uh, okay. I, I think... I mean, she didn't go flying... She kind of wiggled while being electrocuted, but there was no flying involved whatsoever. I, I assumed that it was going to be, you know, like when you hit hit a, a zombie with a sledgehammer and they go, you know, they do somersaults and fly back, you know, do backflips and, and, and that kind of thing. That's what I assumed it would be. I mean, when it says send zombies flying, you, you'd think they would leave their feet and, you know, go flying through the air. Let's test this again. Uh, let's just get a couple of them here. Am I just, am I missing it? Okay. Regular attack. Ah, she just died. Regular attack. My stun baton was charged. She got hit. She did not go flying. What the heck? It's another thing that does not work with the stun baton. Maybe I need to try it with a, a, a tougher zombie? I don't know. Let's do, um, let's try a soldier. They're armored, so we'll spawn in a couple of soldiers. Hey, buddy. All right, we got a charge. Let's go. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, we got a charge. Let's hit the one that we haven't hit yet. You're going to go flying, buddy. Or you're going to stumble back a half step and wiggle. Same thing, I guess. <laughs> All right. You are going to go flying. I've tried the power attack. Now let's try a regular attack. Uh, okay. Power attack. And he just dies. Well, there you have it, folks. The Stun Baton Repulsor mod is broken. It does not send the zombies flying. In my opinion, it doesn't do anything. It just, I mean, I guess you, you get the ammo or the uh, the damage boost. So yeah, it adds it adds a, a damage. You get an extra point of damage, but whoopee. Yeah, you can put the Grave Digger mod on there and get the exact same same uh, damage boost. So what what is the point of the Repulsor mod if it doesn't send the zombies flying like the description said?
Fix that stuff, fun pimps. What's wrong with you? That was, again, false advertising. Oh, that is disappointing. You know, I've come to realize that pretty much everything with regards to the stun baton is disappointing. So, you know, get used to it. Stun baton is still crap, in my humble opinion. Yes, you can deal all... You can, you can swing this bad boy left and right without having to worry about stamina, but it just does crap damage. I mean, crap damage. It's it's so bad. The damage level on this is bad. And just to demonstrate, okay, right now we're sitting at 20 melee damage and 31 power attack damage. So I'm going to modify. I'm going to take, uh, take some of this stuff out. And let's go ahead and let's modify our level, our tier 6 melee or wooden club. So we'll throw you, we'll just throw these four in there. It doesn't matter. We're just looking at damage. So a tier six wooden club does 26 melee damage and 40 power attack damage at a stamina cost of 15. 26, 40, 15. As opposed to the stun baton, which does 20, 20 compared to 26. Power attack is 31 compared to 40. And stamina cost is a little bit less. It's 13 compared to 15. In Sane. Again, I mean, the stun baton is great in theory, but even the new stuff that they added to try to bolster it, it does not work. The repulsor mod does not work. So what's the point of the stun baton? Yeah, honestly, I'm at a loss for words, folks. I, I'm really disappointed. I was hoping that the stuff that the fun pins added in, the book series, the new the new mod, I thought it maybe, I had hope, maybe, maybe it would make it so the stun baton could be viable that you could actually use it and of course they dashed my hopes threw them on the ground stomped on them broke them into a million pieces oh disappointing so unfortunately yes the stun baton is still crap but there you have it folks that is all things stun baton this is savin saying thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me in savin's world if you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. And leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts on the stun baton. Do you think it is viable? Is there something I missed that you want me to test? Let me know down below. Or do you agree with me and think that the stun baton is absolute garbage? Let me know down below. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.